The European Commission, Commission is funding Nintendo, Nintendo opportunity, opportunity Portal, portal helps SMEs like mine like find, find, find what I need to know to bid for a new contract, contract or apply for funding. For funding. It's easy to use, even for newcomers and non-experts. No intermediaries, no cost, just one click. So we all have a fair chance to get involved in a new project. The portal offers me a real one-stop shop, not only for finding opportunities, but also for my project's day-to-day -day interactions with the EU. No more paper contracts going back and forth. Electronic workflows and digital signatures mean less bureaucracy. As a researcher, I need project funding from the EU to turn my ideas into reality. But I can't afford to lose time dealing with administration rather than doing science. This portal helps me to share knowledge on EU-funded projects and potential synergies. When an NGO needs financing, it needs it now. The portal's simplified and accelerated process means easy access to EU funds in fewer steps, from application to reality. The Funding and Tenders Opportunities Portal makes our lives easier. Are you also looking to finance a project or do business with the EU? Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, very happy to be with you at this session on uh, easing access through digital transformation and outreach. We just uh, seen the video of the funding and tender portal. Uh, we are very proud from the Commission side for having delivered this uh, new portal, which provides uh, easy access to newcomers, to many beneficiaries for Horizon Europe program, Horizon 2020 program, but also for the other programs. Um, this recent uh, developments on, of COVID-19 and the crisis of COVID-19 demonstrated that uh, without digital solutions, without digital trans uh, transformation, it will not be possible uh, to, to continue working in uh, the public administration. Uh, it demonstrated that it was thanks to the portal that we had the possibility to continue to provide the financing, to launch the calls, uh, to accommodate the needs of our applicants and beneficiaries. And it was thanks to digital transformation that we were able to continue to communicate with all of them uh, during this critical period. And thanks to digital transformation, we are able to have this session today. So uh, there a lot has been done from our side, but a, no, a lot could be still done in the future. It looks like uh, digital transformation, new technologies, digital skills it are here to stay, remain, and to be used by everybody. So I'm very happy today to have with us in this panel Elke Lamertin. He's the head of European and International Projects uh, at the KU Levin University. Elke, nice to have you with us. Gary Smith is, in the, is a digital strategy consultant with more than 20 years of experience in industries disrupted by the internet. And finally, Thomas Gagai, the director in Digit, responsible for digital business solutions. It's, I would say, is our uh, partner in the whole digital transformation that we have done in the European Commission in relation to Horizon Europe program, but even beyond, because nowadays we are not talking about the digital solutions for the funding and data portal only for our program, only for Horizon Europe or Horizon 2020 in the past. We're talking about e-grants, so digital solutions that will facilitate the access to the funding, implementation of the projects, publication of results and data through this unique portal. Thomas, very happy to have you with us. Um, I would suggest that, that we start the questions, but before that, I would like to announce to all of you that there are questions in, uh, in uh, the system where you can vote. So we have a uh, few questions that you can start voting. My colleagues will start the polling immediately, I suggest, so that you will be able to see the first uh, question how happy you are with the e-grant suite of services offered by Finding the Tender Portal. And while uh, you are going to vote on this, I will ask actually Elke the same question or in a similar way. So Elke, how do you think the Finding the Tender Portal contributed to making the user's life much easier? Okay, I try to switch off my micro. Uh, we can hear you, Elke. Thank you. 
Could you, uh, could you please unmute Elke? Or maybe she lost connection, Elke. I think that Elke lost connection. Um, I cannot see her anymore, so I suggest that I, 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 I move to Gary and I ask him uh, the next question, and then we go back to Elke. Gary, how can public organizations deal with an increasingly digital world? What are the trends of digital transformation in public administration and private sectors? And what is your experience with new technologies? Cool. Um, okay, thanks for that. Um, just a little bit of context. I'm not. I'm not a technical profile. I call myself a slow generalist. Um, uh, I wish I could say I bought Bitcoin back in 2012, but I didn't. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love technology and I love digital, uh, but I'm also uh, old enough now to understand the value of common sense. And it's from that viewpoint I want to share a few experiences I had over the last 20 plus years. And those experiences were both in governmental areas. I've been a civil servant in-house. I've worked with government agencies. Um, I'm, I'm a mentor for Horizon 2020 uh, startup programs. Um, but at the same time, I've also, have, as a freelance uh, consultant, so to speak, I also have commercial experience. So the next bit is a bit of, is a result of sort of hands-on doing as well as, as reverse engineering to see what actually works in this digital world. And there's two, there's two parts of it that I want to, I want to point out. Um, and they both stem from possible reactions that companies and organizations have to this digital. You, you said, oh, it's, it seems to be to stay here. It seems here to stay. And there seems to be two reactions that people generally have. And one is a reaction of denial. It's not really for us. And that's obviously not good. And the second reaction is probably just as useless. Uh, it is an over reliance and an, 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 an over uh, reliance on technology as a solution because digital is so much more than technology. And those are the two points that I kind of want to make is that um, in order to deal with this digital threat or opportunity, there's a little framework that I've, that I've been using with companies uh, and it's called a 70, 20, 10 framework. And you see that successful companies or, or companies that deal with digital in a successful way have the sort of 70, 20, 10 uh, ratio um, <clears throat> of dealing with, with, with their actions. What do I mean by that is that 70% of all the things you do should really focus on your core business, all the, all the resources, the time, uh, the headspace that you use. It's about optimizing your business. It's about making process more efficient. You know, a lot of things that were mentioned in the intro movie. And it's quite often where government agencies do pretty well. They're pretty good at sort of optimizing uh, process and making things more accessible, quicker, cheaper for people to use. However, um, the internet and smartphones, they weren't really invent, invented to optimize stuff. They were also created to really radically alter the way we do things as people and as organizations amongst each other. And that's why this 20% uh, is important. That's what we call innovation. The 70% is just day-to-day -day business. That's optimization. The 20% is innovation. That's actually looking for radically new ways of doing what we've been doing before. And then you have the 10%, and that is actually what, what, what I call experimentation or research and development. Uh, and this is where you go and explore things that we really don't know what's going on just yet, but we need to learn them and we need to see how new technologies or new trends actually can help us see if we need to implement them in the, in the, in the, in the 20%. And I'll explain it. I'll give you a few examples for the portal later on, but it's in interesting to see how the 70, 20, 10 framework really helps both deniers and tech optimists to really frame their thinking around what an organization can do. So that's that's the one thing. The second part is this: uh, the point that digital is way more than technology. Um, um, I mean, quite frankly, the longer I work in digital, the, the more I realize it's got uh, very little to do with technology. And actually, in order to be a, s a company or an organization that's successful in the digital world, which is something different than a digital organization, we need to um, really focus on non-technical conditions. Tech is a commodity in a way. And now we're talking about um, um, things like a relentless focus on the end user. Uh, um, Amazon is always, it's, it's an easy example to use, I admit, but Amazon is not a tech company. Their number one motto in their innovation program is relentless focus on the customer. 
And that's something that is really quite forgotten in the way where technology moves so fast, it's really easier to focus on what users need and what their expectations are. And that's quite an important thing. But it also means things like having really agile work processes. Companies uh, that are successful in this world, they have really quick ways of turning things around and to making uh, uh, software updates really quickly or to change their thinking really quickly. Um, but it's also things like strong leadership. Uh, we need, in order to, to, to build successful platforms, projects, and organizations, we need leadership that really acknowledges the impact of digital and not just the importance of technology. Um, they understand the impact of digital and embrace the fact that we need to take it beyond technology. Um, because I guess the way I've been, I've been dealing with these you know, digital strategies and, 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 and it's the last four or five years, if, if it's, it taught me to reframe digital or the definition of digital uh, towards something like that digital is not about implementing technology. It's about really about understanding the impact that digital has on users, on society, etc., on the way we work together, on culture in general. And then understand those insights and apply them to make products, platforms, organizations that uh, that help people to do what they need to do. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you very much, Gary. And I would like to, to highlight here that what we have delivered over the years in Horizon 2020 and, and later on the funding and the portal is indeed uh, the outcome of a strong leadership inside the European Commission and collaboration between the different services. This digital transformation has been decided and is going to be uh, one of the priorities in the years to come. Uh, that gives me the possibility to, before I, I get turn to Elke, because um, it fits better to our discussion to go to Thomas. Thomas, you have been working in the private sector and you joined the European Commission uh, recently, I think the last uh, three years you have been with us. How do you believe that new technologies support the Commission's digital transformation and the implementation of EU policies in general? Thank you, Anna. Yes, and I'm very glad that I don't need to disagree with Gary. So, in the first place, I'm a computer scientist, so I, I come from the techie area, but I arrived at the same place. Uh, technologies are very important. The technologies open the door into rooms that we didn't even know existed even five years ago. So uh, they're a very important aspect. The key aspect is the uh, to, to embrace the change and as an organization to commit to transformation. So I argue that our digital transformation began as a commission began long before uh, we talked about it or we knew that word and the, fender, uh, the funding and tender opportunity portal is a great example for it. Because what it does, it's a fantastic piece of software. We are, I think we, we are very proud of it and, and we're very happy with what we've achieved. What's behind it is the transformation uh, that um, you have been a much earlier part on, Anna, of the Commission to align its work practices, practices and to deliver a back office operations which lends itself to provide a consistent service like the, 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 the funding and tender portal. So, that is that is the key aspect for me. Having said that, though, um, and not to go in, fall into the trap that some organizations do, we have to digitally really transform. So let's get some blockchain in, or we have to transform digitally. So let's get some AI in. That's not the point here of this. However, once you have these these um, technologies available, and you have the capability of the organization, the commitment of the organization to transform itself and to change its way of working, then you can really go, go about it. And I think the, uh, there is one thing you, you, you mentioned, uh, the, the big A, Gary, organizations like, like this have a little bit of a different ethos. They live from having success. They have to win. They have to win a customer. They have to win a the revenue. They have, they have to win market share and all these things. In the public sector, it's quite often um, more focusing on not to lose, which is how we are viewed. If you are, let's say, a local government and you, you dispense thousands and thousands and thousands of passports, uh, driver's licenses, whatever, flawlessly, you come up to one wrong case 
And if you get the wrong person who really makes a big fuss about it in social media, there goes another technology, in, in the press, in, in the public, then everybody comes up with a good old German concept of Schadenfreude and everybody points out, hey, you screwed up. And if there was an error rate of 0.001%, nobody, nobody really cares about it. So the way that we are viewed as an organization by the public is a little bit counterintuitive to the, ten, to the last 10, Gary, that you mentioned, the experimentation. Because people don't want to see us failing with these things. And therefore, we have to be very careful about where we experiment. There are areas, obviously, right now with the, uh, let's say, the recovery fund, uh, the COVID thing. These are failures, not an option, of course. And that's a different story. I'm not talking about these things, but I'm talking about our daily work practices. If we say, oops, we missed somebody who was applying for a, for a tender, or we missed somebody who was applying for a grant because we were experimenting, this is not good enough for us. So technology needs to help us to do things in a way that lends itself to the nature of our business, which is different to the, to the Amazons of this world. And on the other hand, allows us to still move on and progress, make progress to provide an even better service to the citizens and to the public, which is what we against. I expected. So we're in a funny, we're a funny uh, place right now. People see the Amazons and expect a service like this from us, and on the other hand, they don't want us and they expect us not to fail and not to have uh, to have failures in any way that impact. The public, which they can absolutely very, very, very justifiably expect from us. Thank you very much, Thomas, for this. Uh, and uh, I would like now to to go as you said to the very practical uh, use of the digital transformation in our lives, in managing the grants, in managing the procurement. Uh, I'm just uh, turning a little bit to the first question that we put uh, to be voted. In general, are you satisfied with the e-grant suite of services offered by the Funding and Tender Portal? And 61%, uh, uh, they are somewhat satisfied, and 23%, they are very satisfied. So I think overall is positive. Nevertheless, uh, there are some uh, percentages that they would like uh, to have more and better functionalities. And that gives me the hook uh, to, to turn to Elke and to ask her the first question. Elke, how has the Funding Attender Portal contributed to making the user's life much easier? Okay, uh, thank you and sorry for the technical interruption uh, a few minutes ago. Um, thank Elke, you. Elke, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so it thank you. It looks like that we have a problem with the connection with Elke. I suggest uh, while we are waiting that she is connected again, that I'm going to take some of the questions uh, that the audience put uh, in the chat. And actually I'll start with the first one, which is the mostly voted. Uh, will the project management section of the Funding and Data Portal become a one-stop shop for all EU programs? I think uh, the question is, is yet, yes, in the sense that it is already and there will be much more programs uh, integrated in the Funding and Data Portal. I have the pleasure to have with me uh, Peter Hartwig, who is the business owner of the Funding and Data uh, I would like people to reply to a few of the questions that I see. Uh, first of all, the first question is what exactly that I said. And the second one, it was about what will be the novelties in the funding and data portal for Horizon Europe. So, Peter, please try to address the questions of the, the participants.
Um, we are trying to connect Peter. Give us one second. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah, Peter, we hear you. <clears throat> so, hello. Um, so, I am indeed the so called system owner of this uh, funding and tender portals, and I go now through some of the questions that we see in the poll. So, what will be the main changes in the portal with regard to Horizon Europe? Uh, I think the motto here is continuity. Uh, I also see another question about the search function saying that if for, fun, for uh, finding funding opportunities is sometimes easier to go to Google. So one of the novelties will indeed be in Horizon Europe that the search function will be massively improved. Um, what we also do is develop uh, more elaborate functions for searching partners. We will extend this to the search also for persons. So each user of the portal will have a person profile in the future. And if he or she wants to be found, uh, can uh, <coughs> configure the person profile in that sense. And so it will be then easy also in terms of uh, making connections between partners, not only at the organization level, but also at the person level. Hannah, how much do you want me to go? Okay, so I hand over again to Hannah. So thank you very much, Peter, for these replies. Uh, I think Elke now, Elke now is with us. Elke, could you please tell us if you can hear us and we can hear you? Um, I can hear you uh, very well, and apparently uh, the others can can hear me as well. So, um, Elke, we can hear her. You can hear her. Yeah. So it's me that I cannot hear her. So I can ask the question, um, Elke. How has the funding and other portal contributing to making the user's life much easier? Okay, I will tell you. Um, thank you for inviting me to, to share the, the user perspective. Um, so I've been involved now for, for 12 years in the institutional management of European grants. And in this period, I have seen the system evolving tremendously, tremendously both in scope as in co uh, coverage. When I started as an uh, EU advisor, um, several parallel systems ex uh, existed. So we had EPSS, we had NEF, we had FORCE. They were all serving uh, a particular phase or a particular purpose uh, in the project lifecycle. They had all uh, own login systems, own passwords. Um, I also remember um, the manual signature of grant preparation forms, the manual signature of grant agreement accession forms. So we had to collect them from all the consortium partners from all over the world on paper. We had to collect the package and send it to Brussels by, by regular mail. Um, the whole process um, being repeated in case of one or more amendments. So. Um, no need to say that this was a very time-consuming, labor-intensive and, and, and also often frustrating uh, process. Um, when the participant portal was launched, um, we finally had a good overview of the projects and proposals uh, in which we were involved. Um, and, and also the system for grant negotiation and reporting were at that time available through one login, easier to use. This was already a big, uh, a big step forward. Um, the next big step for, for users was the introduction of the grant management system for Horizon 2020 projects um, called Sigma, which was um, released back in the early uh, 2014. Um, at that time, all signatures became uh, electronic, and this has certainly made the life of a research administrator a lot easier. So. Um, over the years, we have seen more and more uh, functionalities becoming integrated um, in the system. And we are very, uh, we very much appreciated that, that with all these uh, new functionalities, our comments and experience from a user um, perspective uh, were taken into account. 
Um, so since the end of 2018, um, the funding and tender portal, as we know it today, has become a unique entry point for us for fully electronic management of more and more types of European grants uh, during the entire project lifecycle. Starting from looking for best uh, funding opportunities, preparing, uh, submitting the application, grant preparation, managing, reporting uh, a grant, and even um, auditing uh, still to a lesser extent. Uh, for me personally, um, I'm, I'm dealing in particular with health-related programs. The uh, integration of IMI into the portal and, and getting rid of the, the user-unfriendly SOFIA system um, was really a big um, progress. Um, also, the Horizon 2020 dashboards um, aiming at facilitating um, data sharing and, and providing public access to, to um, real-time program data um, can be considered as, as a real uh, progress. So, um, of course, as with any system, um, one en encounters some smaller practical issues when, when using it uh, on a daily basis. And, and I think this should be, these things should be uh, taken care of. And, and we will provide the EC as, uh, with a list of these things uh, afterwards. But in general, I think we can say that the system is, is one of a kind. So uh, if we compare it to systems of, of for example, uh, national, regional, and, and even US funding, um, I think it's a it's a very good system. Uh, mm -hmm. We have not seen any other grant system yet that is so uh, at one time well structured, complete, and, and fully electronic. So the fact that we have one leader per organization who can distribute roles to to other people in the organization, one one account per user, this allows for a very efficient management of of proposals and projects. It gets finished. Thank you, thank you very much, Alke. That um, gives me the idea that uh, maybe we it can launch uh, uh, the the next uh, um, uh, question in the polling. Um, I'm just wondering uh, whether we can start the second question, which is. Uh, for which part of the e-grant suite of services can the user friendliness be further improved? I am not sure we can hear me. Be further improved. Okay. Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I see that the 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 participants are voting. I wait one minute. And what I see as a result, it is that uh, you expect uh, that it will be improved uh, in the search functionality, grant management. That's uh, the two main areas, basically. Search functionality, grant management, and support and help and guidance. Um, I think uh, participants, they are still voting. But I would like, uh, if you agree, that we continue with Elke, who has the practical experience on this, to tell mm -hmm. us what major improvements, indeed, in her view, we can see in the future on the funding and tender portal. Elke, would you like to complement what it is in this uh, poll replies? Of course. So, um... While expansion of the system and and and, and the availability, like to complement? while expansion and, um, of the system and the availability of so, more and uh, over here, Elke. more and more functionalities is is certainly a very positive thing. Um, but on the other hand, it becomes more and more complicated for for investig principal investigators and institutions that are not very used to using the system. So I think keeping the system as intuitive as possible is, is key in the further development uh, of the system. Also providing some instant help functions would prevent um, unexperienced users having to look for and, and go through guidance uh, documents. 
Um, a second point, um, further integrating other programs uh, such as Erasmus and, and structural funds such as, for example, Interreg, both having a national or a regional component um, would really contribute to, to enabling the important concept of, of synergies, uh, which is put forward uh, for Horizon uh, Europe. So I think it's especially these two programs um, that universities uh, will uh, look synergies uh, with Horizon uh, Europe. Of course, uh, harmonizing the rules in this is also an essential uh, element. Um, the integration of, of new funding platforms, uh, such as recently uh, the U European uh, Research Area Corona Platform, the ERA Corona Platform, which collects uh, all funding opportunities from European uh, programs, international programs and national funding uh, programs, is, is very useful and, and should be uh, continued, in my opinion. So, um, in, in our daily... Um, work um, for us as users, the system has become more and more uh, a document management system. So it allows the review, the signature, the storage of final documents all in one place. So um, to make the system even more complete for us and, and to, to give us the opportunity to work with one system, one could think of adding uh, a kind of services to participants not necessarily requiring the EC to, to have a role in these processes. Um, I think about, um, about the, the ability to manage different versions of documents, uh, the negotiation of, for example, the, the consortium agreement, electronic uh, signature of the consortium agreement, although the EC is not a, not a signatory in, in, in this process. Um, also, it could allow financial follow-up at consortium level, management of payments uh, by the coordinator. Um, this would make, make it for us even more a one-stop uh, shop. So, um, although the role and, and benefits of, of new technologies in, in the further uh, development of, of the portal is, is, is beyond my, my expertise, I, I think it's important um, in the future to ensure that technology is not used to automate the system to the extent that uh, flexibility is lost and personal so contacts, um, personal contact with project officers removed from the process. Okay, to automate the system to the extent that uh, flexibility is lost. While most interactions um, in most project are projects are standard, there are also a lot of cases where this is not the case. So we don't want to lose personal interaction with project officers in order to look uh, together for, for solutions of non-standard uh, problems on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and of course, yeah, um, as with all kinds of systems, the user experience depends very much on how often one uses the system. So making the experience of, of, of central research administration staff, which deals with hundreds of grants, very different from, from that, for example, a researcher who uses the system for one or two grants. So here, technology could possibly play a role to provide user-specific interfaces, functionalities based on, on, on the level of expertise or, or the level of experience or um, based on the role in the project. Um, one could imagine providing information tailored to the profile of, of, of the specific organization or, or could be or, or based on, on previous participations. So um, I want to conclude by, by saying that, that it must have been an enormous effort for all uh, European Commission staff over the years to, to come to, to reach the point where the system is now. And, and, and we will be happy to continue giving feedback on, on future developments um, in order to keep the system as user-friendly um, as possible. Sorry, so I hope you can hear me well because unfortunately I have connection problems. So I All hope good. you can hear me well because unfortunately I have connection problems. I, I, I cannot hear anything, sorry. 
So um, thank you very much, FK, for this uh, reply. Uh, I'll, I'll try. It, it's very difficult for me to moderate this session because I cannot hear you. We try with two computers, so I'll do my best to, to continue this moderation. Uh, my next question is for Gary. Gary, how new technologies such as AI, blockchain, social technologies can further ease access to EU funding and or Okay, I think I, I think I got just about enough of the question. Um, <laughs> so yeah, about well, how can we integrate new technologies in this platform, which um, Elka obviously, I mean, you gave a, an amazing progress sort of scale of, of how, it, how it improved and all that. And I think it kind of uh, makes my point of how you, if you split things in 70, 20, 10 uh, actions, you can really speed up on all, on all these uh, aspects because Thomas, I agree with you that it's really hard for a, a, a non-commercial organization to, to, to experiment in that 10%. But I would argue that if you manage to get speed in all these three levels, you actually have a chance of increasing your relevance, which at the end is very important for, for a project like this, uh, which is a different KPI than a commercial KPI, but still it's a KPI that we need to keep in mind. So on a 70%, technology innovation is the things that you used uh, Elke like about you know usability personalized landing pages depending on those all ideas that I had in my head exactly as well search it came out of the poll is your search as good as Google's and how can you uh, improve on that because that's the basic that that you can sort of release on uh, new features and new and new upgrades on a on a day-to-day -day or a week-to-week -week basis eh? if you can if you can pick up speed on that you can really integrate with that I also like the fact, Elke, how you refer to if you automate the boring stuff, don't automate the personal stuff, because then you can actually use very simple technology like what we're doing now. Well, it's not that simple, it seems, but, but video calling or integrating to actually enhance that uh, specialist uh, personal support level, which is also one of the things that came out of the poll, sort of immediate support and why not on a on a, on a face to face level. These, these are simple things. Well, I say simple from a conceptual point of view. I know Thomas that integrating these things from a technical point of view are sometimes more difficult than I say. But then when you when you sort of go into that twenty percent level, which I then call in uh, that seventy percent is optimization, what I just talked about. Twenty percent is innovation. And then you look at sort of how can something like artificial intelligence actually add value to a platform like that and then you talk about okay there's a bunch of data in this system uh, how can we use that to teach some algorithms to maybe get a better matchmaking so you actually start being suggested parties or even individuals that actually you may not have discovered because there's search which is you know what you want and then there's personalized recommendations which is a very sort of powerful thing in digital that can work so um Whatever data there is, can we use some algorithms on it to actually get better matchmaking? Um, blockchain got mentioned as well. I'm I'm a, I'm a huge fan of no, I'm not a fan of blockchain. I'm in, extremely intrigued by by the technology behind it, um, and it triggered me again because the grants platform is about money that is being given under certain conditions to do certain stuff, which is basically one of the core definitions of what blockchains can do. So I was thinking about as a, as a pilot scheme, you know, make make a, a blockchain program where the grant is actually sort of what you can do with blockchain is you can program money, you can give it conditions, how they can be spent in what time frame and where. This is pretty advanced, but and we need sort of a digital euro for that or something like that. But these are like little innovation pilots that could be set up um, because, again, there was sort of like grant management is, is an issue. What if we can build blockchain-based uh, wallets within this system on one or two pr projects so the money gets distributed um, automatically under certain conditions? Not easy, but those are the kind of concepts that popped into my head when I saw the portal. And then... Um, and then you, you you talked about social media or social technologies, and that that thought made me think about the ten percent, which is the I call it the crazy stuff, the stuff that we don't sort of work on on our day to day level. But the ten percent you experiment with what are actually our basic uh, function of our portal actually is. We go back to sort of first principles. What is what is it? What we try to do, um, and it made me think about how how uh, one specific community that I'm following, sort of the decentralized web community, which is kind of related to that blockchain. Community. Community, but they try and see how you can create a more open internet where you can exchange 
value. It's not necessarily financial value, but where, how you can exchange value between people. So it made me think about how, how, which is effectively what part of the part of the portal tries to do: give money to people who try to add value to certain things. But it's not always easy to define how much budget goes to what party. And it's in these decentralized economies or decentralized web communities that they start thinking really differently about basically how you, as a group of people, how can you use sort of what they call incentive alignment methodologies, to, uh, which are quite often based around remuneration in their world. But how can you use that to align incentives so different parties actually uh, all work towards the same goal because there's a certain benefit out of it? It doesn't need to be economic, it can be, but, but it's exploring these, and these are difficult things. It has got to do with socio-economical uh, dynamics, game theory, all that kind of stuff. But like the University of Vienna is doing, is doing stuff around token economics. And I, I would love to see a project like that or an experimentation phase like that, where you go and research that. What would that mean for one particular project with a couple of parties? What are the struggles with it? Is this feasible at all? Because I think those kind of ideas on those kind of levels touch upon the fundamentals of what a grant uh, platform can be if we were to redesign it from scratch, not on a technology level, but on a concept level. Um, so those are a couple of uh, a couple of sort of let's call it slightly more freestyling ideas that popped out of uh, out of my head looking through it, looking looking at it from that technology angle. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I'm sorry for this. We managed to change computer. And I hope now that you can hear me well. Yeah. Okay, I can see you very well, and I can hear you very well. Sorry for all this uh, mess, but uh, digital transformation, it's, it comes with some problems sometimes, so that we face it and we, we see it now. Um, thank you very much for this intervention, Gary. I think you paved the way for the next question. I mean, of course, we are not going to, to do the system from scratches because the systems are exist, but my question to Thomas is how the EU uh, as a public DC, as a public administration, uh, is going to continue to developing e-governance, namely in the area of managing grants and procurement. Mm. Actually, it's not, not too much I can say from that angle uh, that Gary has used. I think uh, there are a lot of things that we need to find ways to bring about and uh, that we can uh, integrate in our in our environment, which is very very risk averse and. Uh, which cannot accept failure in certain areas. Right? Again, if we are a web shop and we have a product that nobody can see, that's a disaster. If we have a tender that uh, cannot be seen by certain uh, by certain uh, potential tenderers, that's the end of the world for 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 us. And so we're dealing with the European taxpayers' money, and therefore, th therefore, we have to apply the highest standard of compliance with everything that we do with the regulation because i mean if we do certain errors then we might be breaking the law and that's something that is obviously totally unacceptable at least for the european administrations uh, nowadays we have to be a bit careful there um the, the the thing though is where can the technology help now, we had uh, we have things about workflows which have to be intuitive uh, are very much like a statement there um, but they have to help and they have to be they have to be helpful in a way that you actually can only do it right and uh, my, my, my hashtag there is make compliance fun so use ai use chatbots use uh, non-intrusive but very attentive uh, technology that that monitors you in an in a non-intrusive way but make sure that you are properly guided along the right steps in the process that is something that of course applies to the external side and also the internal side of the commission for um, what's not always so visible from the outside but our staff is stable and in, in the european institutions are even going down while our uh, the services that are demanded from us and the duties that we have to perform are growing. So we need to become smarter in order to just deal with what we have to do. So the things are 70%, we need to be bloody good at and become very, very efficient. So therefore, the things like, like robot technologies uh, to deal with stuff like that it, and, and the infamous AI that comes up uh, time and time again um, is an important aspect. 
And I want to bring one more thing uh, here to the equation, even though it's a little bit more on the bread and butter level. That is the, the co-innovation and the co-creation. For instance, uh, we will be bringing out as European Commission shortly a new uh, policy and new strategy on how to deal with open source. So we have one project which uh, is about better policy making, more transparent policy making, where we share uh, or we have uh, initiated an open source project which is now embraced by government in Germany, in, uh, in Spain, some others in France and even Switzerland are at least considering to use it. And what, we what will happen then in the open source community is that we jointly develop a piece of software and therefore develop best practices in terms of how do you create transparent policy making and the co-creation and the joint creation of value i think and to put it really really high that's what europe is all about at the end of the day isn't it we want to we, we're co collaborating and cooperating because we can be better than the sum of our parts in doing so and so I think the, the methods of working that we had at the very beginning that we have to embrace in order to do a digital transformation successfully and successful digital transformation for us can only mean value for the public. In order to achieve that, it's all about how we do things and how we embrace those technologies that are available to us now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas, for this uh, comprehensive reply. I've seen there are a lot, a lot, a lot of questions in the Q and A's, uh, and at the same time, we have launched uh, uh, the third uh, um, question to be replied by all of you, which is uh, on a scale of one to five. How do you rate the importance of new technologies in easing access to EU funding and or to improve the user experience? And uh, the reply there is 52% very important and 34% somewhat important. So uh, I, I, I take for granted that, of course, the inclusion of uh, new technologies, it is very important overall. Um, uh, let's go to the chat and let's see uh, other questions that are on the table. For example, uh, one question is if the different EU programs will be more connected to create synergies, will this show in the portal and if so, how? So this is a very good question and I don't think we do have the answer yet. I'm looking at my colleague Peter. Certainly synergies between programs is going to be one of the priorities in the next programming period. Having all the programs on the same portal that uh, for publishing the calls that facilitates the possibility of joint calls as well under the context of synergies. Now, how in practice we will communicate about the synergies and uh, how they the, how they materialize the number of beneficiaries, how the funding is distributed is something to further uh, discuss uh, internally. Then uh, um, I have seen some other questions that they are very interesting, uh, like uh, when will the easy tenders which are one integrated in the portal can be seen in the account of the organizations. I think this is more a question for Thomas. So Thomas, when do you think uh, this will happen? The new yeah. East standards functionality. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. I know. Okay, if you're asking me, sorry, I have to repeat, I had a dropout. Okay, sorry, Thomas, I can ask you. So the question is, when will the easing tenders will be integrated in the portal and can be seen by the organizations? That is a good question and I have to give it a pass at this moment in time unless you can help me out with that information. I can't give you a specific date on this. I think it's starting now. So we are in the process to start Thank now you. integrating so that be good news. So in the funding and other portal, there will be possibility to look at the funding opportunities at, uh, through programs, but also at the tendering opportunities through the EC tender. Um, there is one question that I find it very well, and maybe uh, Peter will reply to it, uh, who is sitting next to me due to the problems we have with the, with the computers. The question is whether there is an opportunity to give suggestions for improvement for management of projects in the funding tender portal. Yes, of course, there is an opportunity. I'm wondering, Peter, how this could happen, uh, where uh, the ideas could be communicated. 
So one possibility is, of course, that you address your national contact point with whom we are in, in permanent contact. But you can also indeed write emails at either directly to me or to, to the colleagues dealing with, with the portal. So no problem. We are open to any suggestions. And of course, so we have this e-chat functionality that is working uh, still during the RNI days uh, through the, um, uh, the hub, the hub six. You can always send your suggestions and ideas in this e-chat functionality. Mm -hmm. um, I see another question, quite technical. I mean, if we would be good for coordinators and beneficiaries to control who receives all automatic emails from the participant portal to the projects. So, Peter? Yes, so we know that this system of notifications is not optimum. We sent too many messages, too un unspecific, not clarifying who has to act and who is just there for information. But we are just doing a major overhaul of the complete system. So indeed, that will be improved. Maybe not in the sense that the coordinators should now decide who gets what, because that would be additional burden, but to make the system overall more intelligent so that people know when it's for action or when it's just for information. And we reduce the number of notifications. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and another question that I would like to reply is whether we could uh, consider to add uh, uh, the publications of ERDR funds and in the EC portal. Uh, the, the, sorry, the, the national authorities delivering care defense to use the EC portal. I think this is something that for the moment it's outside the priorities of the commission because of course each one of the managing authorities has its different system, its different rules, but maybe it would be something to envisage in the future. Unfortunately, not for the moment. Um, I think, uh, yes, Gary. Uh, so if I could just pick up on that, it's really interesting to me to hear a lot of these questions that pop up are actually about feature requests. Uh, and Elke also mentioned, oh, we have a list of things that uh, that we think could get better. So I think a, 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 an important step of figuring out what your users want is to have a really fast processing methodology to to capture these these uh, things either by people per I mean it's it's interesting to see that this sort of a web chat is it becoming a platform for feature questions um so if if you could streamline that into into a system and actually use a uh, very simple sort of I'm going to be ugly now and I'm going to call them commercial conversion technologies, uh, but to figure out how people use websites and see if they can do what you do, then you will, then you'll have data, quantitative uh, and qualitative mm -hmm. data from people to really start fine tuning this, uh, the, the usability of it, because that low threshold uh, for non users and for younger users, they're not getting any, they're not getting any older, they're getting younger. And their their level of usability expectations is extremely high. Um, so you, if you if you simplify that, then you'll have a really good chance to to make it even better. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And I think what we will do, we will continue to organize a specific webinars where we discuss this type of details. So I think it's a, a good idea to continue having this interaction and uh, uh, feedback uh, from those that they are using uh, the system. Uh, Elke, on the basis of uh, these questions that you have seen uh, uh, in the chat box and you can hear from us, um, can you pick up I think I, I you, you we replied already this question, but I would like you to pick up one or two key aspects if we have to concentrate ourselves in the in the first period i mean we are going to launch the first call of horizon europe very soon can you choose two aspects that you think that we we do have to concentrate on if we want to improve the functionality of the phonics and tender portal in general you mean okay mm. maybe we lost a key no, no, no I'm, I'm still here. Can you hear here? Uh, yep, we hear. Okay. Um, I think there are two important um, 
aspects I, I can take home from this from this session. So I think for, uh, digitalization digitalization is 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 should be encouraged and and it should be um, combined with a personal approach. Eh? So um, um, I would say research administration. Um, as digitized as possible, as personal as necessary, uh, to find a, a right balance between digital, digital administration and, and room for a personal approach uh, of, or a personal uh, intervention. Thank you, thank you very much, Eke. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to, to to make a similar question to Thomas. Thomas, you're working in digit. Digital transformation is one of the biggest priorities that uh, your commissioner put in front, and the commission put in front is one of the priorities uh, of our um, president. W when, what are your strategy and when, where do you think you're going to concentrate in the next period, always in the, in the, in the content of uh, portals, uh, uh, communicating with beneficiaries, communicating uh, with, uh, uh, with the public uh, and providing access to information and data? Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good question. Um, and that actually is at the core of it, I think. At the end of the day, the digital transformation only matters about the mileage that we make with the public. So if you look at some key initiatives in that area that we're doing right now, the portal, the tender, uh, funding and tender opportunity, uh, opportunity portal, we have the single digital gateway, at, which at some moment in time will become the uh, transnational public service hub uh, across Europe. And, and we have some other things in that area. At the end of the day, it's about the user experience. And I think uh, if I look at um, like the common denominator maybe or behind these things and what Eric very nicely summarized a moment ago, it is about people need to feel that they're being taken care of. And it has to be um, acceptable to them to do whatever we ask them to do to, to, to participate in a tender to ask for funding or, or to, to consume any service that we have to offer. Search was mentioned before. I think uh, if there is one thing that I would put at the very center, it's the user experience where we focus, and focus on, and particularly with, with the interface to the public. Gary just mentioned that the expectations there, and everybody has uh, their lovely smartphone of whatever brand, and uh, there are hordes of people who are thinking day in, day out, how can they make this more amenable? We don't have that resourcing, but we have to focus on that aspect. And we have to, we have to be uh, a nice party to deal with. Whoever, whoever deals with us from our public, from our stakeholders, and uh, whoever needs a good experience from us. And I think. This is also part of our credibility. The good old uh, administration of the centuries ago, when I grew up and when I got my first passport, people will not accept that anymore. And especially not in the digital world, not on the web, not, not in any way that we uh, interact uh, digitally. So that I think is the core. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. We have only four minutes uh, to, to finish this session, and I would like to give the floor for a, a last statement to Gary. Gary, what I would like from you is to tell us, you heard our discussion, uh, you heard uh, how important it is for us, European Commission, through digital means, to the platform, to communicate uh, with applicants, beneficiaries. You heard uh, Elke sharing her experience from the platform and you heard the different questions and uh, uh, the feedback that we received through the poll. So, if you have to advise us as a consultant, one thing that will be our first priority for the next two years, what do you think would be that one? Um, 
I'm going to have to make it two, but no, I'm going to have to make it 0 0.7 and then 0 0.3 uh, state uh, recommendation. And the 70% recommendation is as both as Thomas and Elke said, and I see Jill also mentioning about uh, uh, users would be eager to contribute is use user experiences, real user experiences through pulse, through interviews and through real behavior data on the website to focus on that usability, as Thomas said, uh, on this, on this, whatever, because the, the, the bar is being very high, but also, and I, and I, I really, I really want to make a point out of that is find innovation ways, not on the live website, because obviously it's harder to innovate as a, as a European commission website than a commercial website, but commercial websites don't launch uh, r random features without them having to be heavily tested. So, so do innovate on, don't just focus on efficiency and usability because the impact of digital is going to be way much deeper than just efficiency and usability. It will have an impact on transparency, of fairness, of value, on uh, co-creation and, and collaboration. And that is what especially the new generation is going to expect, whether it's from a government or from European Union institution or from a commercial company. They're going to have uh, expect to be taken for to be taken seriously in that world as well. So, and in order for that, you're gonna have we're gonna have to find ways to innovate in that twenty or the ten percent or whatever without it getting too technical. So, recommendation usability user experience based on user real user data and input. Gilles said they're key, eager to contribute and find ways to innovate on the more deeper impacts of digital that are that are go beyond efficiency and uh, and uh, usability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for this statement. And indeed, uh, we do want to innovate and we have to innovate. Actually, we are working for digital research and innovation and we do need to take this challenge to innovate uh, through digital transformation. And we do have to use more and more the user experiences. And this is probably we would have to do more uh, regular in the years to come. I would like to thank all of you for this fruitful discussion to apologize once again uh, for my network problems. Unfortunately, that happen when we are going on virtual. Uh, hoping that very soon we have the opportunity to meet uh, in person. And thanks all of the participants to this event. At the end, we were around 150 people uh, discussing uh, and talking about uh, the digital transformation and finding the dentist portal. Uh, enjoy the afternoon. Uh, I would like to, to thank everybody and uh, see you soon, hopefully, again, virtually or physical. Bye-bye. Thank you, Anna. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.